Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Web3 Native Podcast. And today, we are continuing our Year of the DAO, DAO mini series. And we're so glad to have Anubhav from Parcel with us today. Hi, Anubhav. Hey, Suga. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So uh, we've heard from quite a few perspectives about DAOs in this series. And uh, our prediction is, of course, there's going to be exponential growth and defining the future of work through DAOs, right? Uh, now, Anubhav's background is actually uh, with Parcel. And Parcel, if you aren't aware, actually, if you're in the DAO space, it's probably quite a well-known name uh, because it has been serving more than 500 DAOs and processed more than 120 million in payouts. So like these are the people who actually work in DAOs and contribute to DAOs. And so uh, Parcel is a leader uh, in this space. So today, we'd love to go into many of the trends and patterns that we're going to see in DAOs through the lens of like somebody who is providing the infrastructure for this and how then the infrastructure is then tailored to meet many of these needs. Uh, of course, uh, before we start, uh, we always love to go back to the history and background uh, of yourself, Anubhav, and what whatever you like to share from your personal story leading up to Parcel. Sure, yeah. Um, so I've been in this space since 2017 um, and uh, I joined um, as a developer uh, in 2019, working with Instadap in the in the initial team, and then with Biconomy. Uh, those are both uh, with three startups from India, and um, I was working as a blockchain developer uh, in in Biconomy, where I faced uh, this problem of paying out to, you know, uh, we're, we're a small team of eight to ten people, but it, it's still very um, cumbersome. To do um, you know mass payouts uh, in crypto, and so I had I had my way uh, in a, in an ETH global hackathon, and and you know that idea turned out to be Parcel, where um, we helped with the three companies initially uh, with running payroll on top of this um, you know multi sig standard that is Gnosis safe, um, and then we quickly realized we're building for DAOs a self custodial solution like this. It's, it's tailored made for for DAOs, and since then uh, we launched publicly uh, in June of twenty one, and um, that was the you know point of uh, you know adoption for DAOs, the viable of DAOs. I would say, uh, you know, we saw with grants committee committees like Uniswap, Compound, Dawe coming up, and then with uh you know com token launching with lm um and then we saw all of these uh, protocols decentralizing themselves by forming a dao um and here we are uh right now it's it's going great um in terms of the growth of daos uh, but it's still early stages we're still starting out uh and i'm very excited to see what's what's possible in the future absolutely yeah when we talk about future I think a lot of people have been framing DAOs as like the future of work. And one paradigm is that like, instead of having these like hierarchical organizations, the very definition of what a DAO should look like is either less hierarchical or non-hierarchical where some, I even heard some definitions where like DAO has no leader. Uh, but I think from, from what you've seen, that's definitely quite the opposite, right? I think the very fact that somebody has to control the, the bank account and control the payouts, so to speak, implies uh, some sort of hierarchy. Uh, so it's a bit of an ironic play, but I wonder whether it's a, it's a temporary thing. What are some trends we're trying to see, right? So uh, Anubhav, I'd love to hear from your perspective. Uh, is there hierarchy uh, in DAOs? And if so, how does it look like? And what kind of trends do you see in it? Yeah, I mean, uh, to begin with, I think we've we've all heard of the theory of structurelessness, and and we've seen that even if there are no structures or hierarchy in any organization, be it DAO or or some other organization, there will be natural power structures forming. Like it's 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 going to happen organically anyway, um, and that's what we're seeing right now as well. It, it, there is some sort of hierarchy, even if it's not. Uh, something that they have accounted for or something, you know, they they say that there is. Um, I think it's better to accept that there is an hierarchy instead of just saying that 
those are flat structures. It's it's not. Um, the flat structure uh, wouldn't work for DAOs as a scale up as as it had has not worked. Uh, you know, in, in all the previous experimentations you see with you know uh, all the all the classic organizations that we have seen also, um, and so we've seen that for for the past one year or so, people are trying to think of DAOs as flat organizations um, and we've clearly seen that it doesn't work out uh, we've seen a few cases as well not to name them but it, it's kind of it, it falls apart nobody knows you know what really uh, is happening who is responsible for what who is accountable for what um, and therefore you know right now we're seeing some really cool things uh, you know something like orca protocol right uh, they're focusing on just this part of structure where they are uh, you know, doubling down on the fact that there is a need for structure and the structures would be smaller pods uh, inside a DAO. Uh, and it could be it could be a sub DAO. It could, you know, well, very form a, a sub DAO in the future. But it starts with working groups as smaller pods of expertise. So you have, you know, different pods of different expertise and you have formed that structure. You can form that structure through Orca protocol. So that's that's a really cool uh, platform that I have seen. Uh, but even without Orca right now, there are almost in every DAO, there are working groups uh, and they name them differently. Right? So it's it's called pods, it's called teams, it's called um, guilds, whatever you want to name it, but there are structures and it's very well needed. Mm, nice. Yeah. So it seems that we have realized that to get things done, there needs to be some level of coordination and some level of hierarchy and they don't need to persist across time. Uh, but f to achieve a certain purpose, then you need to come together, have a leader that will coordinate, and then therefore some level of hierarchy to at least move things forward, right? So that uh, it's, it's a natural way that humans are organized. Uh, but there's also a bit of a hierarchy that's more persistent in the form of a group of like a, you can call it a core contributor, committee, council, uh, whatever you call it. And these are the people who uh, make the, the, you can say, key decisions of like, where the money goes, who they represent the DAO if there is a fundraise or or there is a, a certain unifying strategy of like, let's say we're going to go to the stop down model or we're going to uh, identify ourselves uh, in, in a certain branding or, or positioning, right? Uh, how then do you, do you also see this core group forming uh, and then with, with the working groups around it? Yeah, I, I think there's, there's definitely... Uh you know, um, there's definitely this core community kind of a structure forming. Um, you know, you have multisigs are that, right? So all the DAOs that run on multisigs are basically, um, you know, six to seven uh, individuals who are taking all the finance decisions for, you know, on behalf of all the 260 contributors that your DAO might have. And that's, that's really not how it's supposed to be either, right? It's not, it's not like, um, you have to have structure in the sense that you also have power uh, of centralization like you have centralization of power instead um, so i think that's that's what we'll see uh, in in the in the coming future that you will have decentralized uh, decision making and one of the things that we also did at parcel is introduce something called delegates who uh, can act as you know um, delegates in all the finance decisions related to that particular DAO. So they can, um, you know, create transactions on behalf of uh, all the multi sig owners so that they also have a say in what what exactly happens during payments and all the all those things, right? Uh, so yeah, I, I think it still exists. It very much exists in all the all the DAOs with uh, which are based on Gnosis safe multi sigs. Um, and uh, we will see more uh, you know, power given more to uh, other authorities like you know leads of the teams, right? Uh, people who are who are actually you know doing well, who wants to take up responsibilities, will see more and more uh, you know decentralization in decision making of all the finance and payments. Mm. Mm. Is this something that you're already observing? I, I presume that the very fact that you're building this delegation feature uh, in payout so that it's not just a small group that has to approve all of the financial decisions uh, sounds to me that there is a trend that uh, even though there's a core group, over time, 
uh, the identity, the DNA of DAOs is to actually give away, push away this power closer and closer to the edges towards the working groups. Or is that right? Or what else do you see in this uh, trend? Yeah, uh, it 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 should be. Uh, it has not really happened right now because we don't have the tools, uh, right? So we we talk about you know uh, there being more DAO tools than DAOs, and and we've heard that story a lot on Twitter. But really, have we experimented uh, with all the all the different structures and and architectures of DAOs around? Uh, you know, how an organization is structured, how the payments happen, who controls what, have we really experimented? And I think we have not, right? So we've we've kind of only uh, experimented with what works in Web2 and, and kind of bring that to Web3. But, you know, with, uh, with DAOs and, and with Web3 ethos, we have we've not really experimented that is in aligned um, to, web, to Web3 ethos where you have, you know, more... No, no, no centralization of power. You have more power given to um, a lot of different people uh, who can take decisions, and and we'll see that in this whole spectrum of, you know, having a flat structure uh, and everything is voted upon in the governance versus having a central multisig. So this and and in between between these two choices, there is a whole spectrum of ideas that could form. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And, and like you said, it's a bit of a chicken and egg with the infrastructure. So would you like to share then what, what does Parcel provide today that uh, enables at least what is working right now? And what are you building that could somehow either shape or enable uh, what DAOs should be or want to be like? Sure, yeah. So right now, we're, we're built on top of this uh, multisig called Gnosis Safe, which is kind of the standard across DAOs, uh, most battle-tested battle multisig. Um, and so we're built on top of that. Um, as a DAO, you can, um, you know, add your contributors there. Um, you know, if you want, if you want to do recurring payments, if you have fixed payments, you can, um, you know, just make sure that you can um, plan it one time and then all the time just execute it uh, once a month. Do airdrops um, through CSV payouts. You can do payroll uh, if there is. Um, you know, you can do payroll by by multiple teams, so you can select teams and put, pay all of all of them in one click. Um, so essentially, we're uh, until now we're kind of uh, going towards solving the pain points first. Like, what is the what is the exact pain point that DAOs are facing right now? And it's uh, management of all these payouts. And so we do we do kind of uh, is is that state. Uh, and now we're adding you know uh, 2.1 2.2 versions on top of that which is basically uh, how can you make this more decentralized how can you empower other contributors in a DAO to be able to take up responsibility and um, you know um, work with multisig owners as well like you know we see six multisig owners seven multisig owners uh, controlling 15 million dollars in a DAO which is not not the right night not the right way to proceed about uh, finance and payments and our tooling basically revolves uh, around how can we make it better like how can we decentralize these powers um, and who decides the allocation of contributions um, and who can um, execute these contribution contributions it does it doesn't have to be these six people taking all the decisions. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and the way you're going about it is uh, through this delegation process that you mentioned. Are there any other integrations that you are uh, that are in the pipeline? For example, from like governance uh, into payouts as well, or, or what else? Yeah. Uh, so we're kind of uh, in the middle of building another product, uh, which is kind of dedicated to just particular this thing, uh, where you will see. Uh, a lot of control being given not to uh, multisig owners. They only will have the control of execution. So basically approval or execution of a transaction. And how do you allocate? How do you, uh, you know, distribute funds? Who queues the transaction? Uh, who can view the accounting of the transactions? Uh, and all of that stuff. Every part of, uh, you know, finance uh, can, be delegate, can be delegated to another person or another team or another multisig as well. So uh, we're trying to build a product around that, which is, uh, I think, uh, going to come out in, in the next few months. 
Awesome, awesome. Yeah, really looking forward to that. So uh, growing alongside uh, the the movement of DAOs and, and almost like predicting but also shaping how DAOs should look like, right? Yeah, I think that's a, such an interesting position to be in. Uh, I, I love to shift gears now to move to the second aspect we want to discuss today. So first, we, we talked about like the hierarchies, right? And secondly, there is also a core value, so to speak, in a Web3 and DAOs, which is about user-owned, right? Where it's not that everybody is, is a flat or like a con open community to contribute, but there's still a small group of people not only control, but also own the whole thing and therefore share an the upside. There's a lot of, a, there's a strong ethos to actually give away uh, ownership as well uh, of the DAOs, be it in the form of DAO tokens or some form of equity-like uh, stake, uh, however that is represented to the contributors and even the users uh, of whatever the DAO produces. And a large part of this, of course, uh, can be potentially seen in the payouts, right? Because uh, how you then recognize people's contributions by either you're giving cash or you're giving equity, so to speak, right? And cash would be the stable coins or like, say you want to give ETH, DAI, uh, but then the equity would be like the DAO tokens. And I understand that over time, Parcel also had to adapt to this uh, flexibility and provide new features. So why don't we start from from what you're seeing, right? Like, in the, has there been a shift or a change and what are the trends here in terms of like, how do you recognize contributors? Yeah, uh, I think it's a great question. First of all, I think uh, with the V2, I think we, we wanted to use this term very cautiously. Um, it's called contributor mm -hmm. economy. Um, and we want to use that in particular because we feel um, that is going to be uh, the future of work, right? So, you know, previously, historically, what we have seen is that you are a freelancer, uh, you're a gig worker, you go to Upwork, freelancer.com, you do your work, get your compensation in cash, right? Um, versus a startup employee that works, who gets cash, but who also gets stocks. Um, of the company, right? You get equity as well. Um, now we're seeing this contributor economy emerge where even if you're contributing in a gig, gig economy, your active contributions will result in some sort of ownership. And that is, this is, this is so empowering, right? So you can actually get equity for even freelancing um, in that sense. Um, and that's the ethos, right? So um, that's why we see a lot of DAOs, a lot of contributors, giving out uh, payments in the native tokens. They want to, you know, spread this uh, ownership between other uh, contributors uh, in around the world as well, whether it's core contributors, whether it's, uh, you know, floating contributors who are, uh, you know, uh, contributing for a while uh, or in multiple DAOs at once. Uh, and that's kind of the freedom that comes along with contributor economy as well. You can delve into different uh, different uh, DAOs, but at the same time, retain ownership of each of these DAOs, which was kind of not possible before. Uh, and I think that's going to be the, the biggest thing. But at the same time, as I said, I think it imposes a lot of problems as well. Uh, one of the problems that we saw with this sort of payment is uh, these native tokens are volatile, um, right? And, uh, and so what happens is, uh, you know, in the, in the last few months, we saw a huge drawdown of 80, 90% of tokens, right? Um, and what happened was uh, we, we've heard a lot of people, uh, you know, we talked to a lot of contributors and they've said that uh, they've kind of lost 80% of their salaries in the last ten, uh, eight, eight, to, eight to 10 months or so. Like whatever they got from the governance tokens or uh, the native token, whatever it was, they did not sell to cash. Right, they did not encash that uh, thing because they wanted to participate in in the ownership of that DAO, and uh, that's a concern, right? You you can't you can't really lose uh, you know eighty percent of your salaries, um, and so it's going to be important. And a lot of a lot of contributors have now started asking for you know split between cash and and ownership. Like, what do you want? What do we want to have? And it really depends. Uh, it's kind of subjective, like. I, uh, you know, want to pay my bills, uh, you know, every month, right? And there is some some expenses, some operating expenses that might come up on a random month, right? On that random month, I would like to have more cash than ownership because I want to spend more in my real world, right? Um, and then it becomes subjective um, as to what should the split be. Um, 
and that's something that we're introducing on the contributor side where you can uh, request a split of a native tokens versus stable coin to your DAO. Like whatever you want to have for this month, you can request it in the in the contributor dashboard itself. Um, yeah, this, these are some of the things that that we are observing. But uh, but the, the the most interesting part is that everybody wants to be uh, a part of the part of the ownership, right? They want to own that piece of of DAO, whatever they're working for, and the freedom to contribute to multiple DAOs is is absolutely uh, you know rewarding for them. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. We definitely want to get to the the multiple DAOs bit uh, part in a bit. Uh, I want to come back to to what uh, pick up on what you just said. Uh, starting from history of like freelancing and purely cash, and then we somehow kind of like swung too much the other way, where like DAOs like hundred percent DAO tokens, which is like a startup equity which can fluctuate uh, incredibly wildly, yeah. and you don't want your livelihood to completely depend on it. So it, it sounds to me like we're coming to some, some sort of middle ground where like. Uh, some sort of cash and equity. Uh, how how's this? How does this work? What are the models that you've seen? Right? Do we let's say fix a kind of a dollar amount, and you would pay out like an equivalent amount of dollars in those tokens, uh, and versus cash, or uh, do you see like it being fixed in the kind of like the number of tokens that you want to give out, uh, and then maybe a fixed number of amount of cash as well, so that actually there's a fixed and variable component that that comes out every month, right? Or I just I just want to curious like what kind of uh, archetypes, patterns that you're seeing, and you know which ones are contributors, you know, liking more, which ones working. Yeah, sure. Um, so, what we've observed is that uh, most core contributors will have fixed tokens rather than fixed US dollars uh, because they want to get more ownership. Right? It's either you know, it's like 500x tokens for this um, uh, for this. Uh, for a for a month and then some cash along along with along with it right so that's what we've seen with core contributors but other than that for all the floating contributors who are uh, you know kind of freelancing across DAOs uh, and are you know spending some time in in a particular DAO they tend to go with US dollars as the base um, base figure and then convert that into token and give out. Mm, I see, I see. So it, it's different depending on your role. If you are a long-term committed, uh, you want like to to fix your amount of tokens with some cash. Whereas if you are not part of that core group or you're not yet uh, considering a long-term commitment, then uh, you have a dollar amount and you just, you can request what's the split like for you. Absolutely. I mean, uh, the, the requesting of split doesn't really happen uh, because... You know, it's it's kind of operational mess if you're looking to pay out more than hundred contributors and each of them is is requesting uh, to you. So right now we've we've tried to build this feature. Hopefully this will be helpful. But uh, at this point of time, uh, for operational efficiency, everyone is opting for um, kind of the same split for every contributor. Ah, I see, I see. So you would fix a split, and then after that, you can do whatever you like with it. Uh, sell it for yep. cash, or or buy more if you think it's not enough. Yes, I see. I see. Yeah, and it's quite interesting because the the part that's not the core contributor, uh, like you mentioned, they are they tend to be in like working groups. They sometimes are irregular. Right? I I could come in sometimes, and I could be contributing to both product development and marketing and business development at the same time. And I would get um the payouts in in different four different tasks. And uh, I understand that's also part of the fluid nature that uh, that you are addressing with uh, the current version of Parcel, right? Why don't we talk a bit about, about that flexibility as well? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So we introduced something called tags. Uh, and tags are basically your you know teams, your, your working groups, pods, whatever you want to call it. And each of the contributor can be in multiple tags, right? So what that means is, you know, we've seen across DAOs that everyone, um, not everyone, but a lot of, a lot of uh, contributors contribute to multiple working groups in a DAO. And uh, we've kind of made space for that as well. So you can be in multiple uh, teams and, and, and you know, it's, it's kind of embraced in, in a Web3 culture that you can contribute to uh, multiple working groups. Um, it's, it's, been, it's been happening, I think, all the core contributors that we've seen are mostly in some of the other, some of the other working groups as well because they kind of have the expertise. You know, you're, you're kind of looking for someone who can lead uh, certain areas of DAOs. And if you are, a, you know, if you go at, let's suppose, 
um, people, right? You're you're good at people. Then um, you're you're probably also engaged with operations, right? Uh, if you're engaged with people, um, so you can kind of you know contribute a little bit uh, in the in the operations working group as well. So we kind of see seen that overlap happening all the time, and uh, kind of made space uh, for that uh, in an application as well. Um, it, it reminds me of of uh, kind of a bottleneck or kind of a con of this approach as well. Um, it's, it happened with one of the DAOs that uh, I, I can't name really, but it's it's a great story. So this DAO actually, uh, you know, it's, it's one of the biggest DAO and, and they, they let you uh, participate in multiple working groups. So what happened is they had like a fixed, uh, you know, amount for one of the highest uh, contributor, you know, some somebody who, who's so like the master mastermind behind uh, this DAO, right? Um, and what happened was uh, somebody uh, participated in eight different working groups and kind of earned more than this particular guy who was the highest mark, who was the mastermind behind it, right? And it has happened for over months and months until they realized that this is, this is definitely not the right thing to do. Uh, and so this is this this is what uh, you know fluidity brings along, like it empowers you, but at the same time there will be people who will be um, gaming the system. Mm, mm. Yeah, it's it's quite a trade off that needs to be managed, and that's also a perfect segue to the third uh, question about DAOs that uh, I love to discuss, which is the idea of uh, self sovereignty or the individual perspective. Right, uh, we, you, you've mentioned a few things now. One is, uh, I can be working across multiple working groups. Do I really um, contribute sufficiently across these different working groups? And should I be paid equally across all of them? Right. Uh, but also, how do I make sure it's fairly recognized? Uh, the other perspective also is that I might be working across multiple DAOs across a similar function, kind of like a, a freelancer that specializes in, say, uh, product development, let's say it's UI, UX, right? And then I build it for, for all these different DAOs. And so there's also a perspective that needs to be built where it's kind of like a contributor resume and reputation. And that needs to be seen uh, by by DAOs, right? I want to see, hey, this guy has contributed so to so many aspects of, of our DAO. Or I want to see that this person has done this specialized function across many DAOs and has been recognized uh, for that contribution. Uh, I'm curious to see whether uh, this has really played out or not. Because uh, on one hand, if if I'm doing everything to, to for one DAO, I'm, it seems I'm very long term committed. I have a lot of context, uh, but you might not get the best uh, person for the job, right? Not the, necessarily the most professional person, right? You you might just just the person who's most committed, and loyal, <laughs> and or trying to like get the most ownership as they can, like kind of gaming the system. Uh, whereas Whereas on, on the other hand, I, I might get a very professional person, but I don't know whether this person is just shopping around for the most ownership or the highest paying uh, DAO that will, that will do the service and may not have sufficient context um, as to what we need. And like, we don't know where this person is going to stay. And therefore, should we give so much importance uh, or whatever, a more significant role like a squad leader to such a person who's like, you know, is an ad hoc and it's going to join whatever working group that works for that individual. So this tension between the individual and the collective uh, in a self-sovereign world, uh, what are some, and I know Parcel has also kind of enabled this with your individual view, right? But what was it informed by, right? What, what are the trends and uh, the current state that you see here? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's a promised land, right? I mean, you can have on-chain credentialing, you can have on-chain reputation, and they can probably see what this guy is, is up to. Uh, and it's going to tell you a lot of information about that particular uh, person contributing in a DAO. Uh, right now, we haven't really seen anything that has gained adoption in terms of what it would mean uh, to have uh, you know, a centralized on-chain credentials or off-chain credentials, whatever that is. But we've not really seen any sort of tool or any sort of um, you know, protocol coming up, which can, which is mass adopted and, and is solving this very, very, uh, you know, very, very well. Um, and, and so what that, what that means is right now, everything is uh, kind of based on, uh, you know, how do you onboard new, new contributors, right? Because everybody's trying to build their onboarding methods. Everybody's trying to educate 
and onboard in their own different ways. You have a bunch of bounty boards that you can use. You have your onboarding sessions. You have your interviewing processes. I, I heard some DAOs are opting for interviews as well um, in the, like a more traditional structure, which is, is kind of interesting. Um, but at the same time, I think it's it's a long road to reaching some sort of a mass adopted on-chain credentialing system. Um, you know, we see a lot of startups right now coming up and trying to solve this. Uh, once that happens, I think we'll see uh, we'll see more of you know easier onboarding, more uh, fair onboarding. I would say right because otherwise, uh, right now in DAOs, whoever is um, kind of the popular one gets all the votes in in every department, right? So that's what ha- that's what happens usually. Uh, and there is no, you know, credentialing to to back up that particular, um, you know, that particular um, talk. And uh, yeah, it's I I I, had, I think I've I can I can um, speak a lot about what the problems right now are. And you know, again, going back to the earlier point about DAO tools, there are not enough DAO tools that are solving the real problem. Uh, there is just uh, you know someone building X or Y. Uh, which is you know copying all the all the web two uh, products and and building that you know, notion discord and all that stuff um mm-hmm. and so this becomes really relevant right you want something that everybody so you know we at parcel have some data around payments and we want that to be communicated to this particular protocol right like uh, how did this guy do in project management right uh, how did this guy do in bounties how did this guy do in this DAO? And we can combine all of that data and form an on-chain credentialing system, which will be the passport that a contributor carries uh, along with him, along with his, his private key. And, and that's what we want. We're, we're, we're yet to see something like this. So is Parcel trying to contribute to that uh, picture or is perhaps trying to aggregate some of that picture? Because I can see the beginnings of that, the tags, right? If I tag you that you will have contributed to project management or to this bounty, uh, you know that this person has worked at least broadly in this category. And I also know that you you actually add the link or the, the output itself to the payout, right? So you can see exactly which forum post you're contributed to uh, which which pieces of code that you have written and, and that is directly viewable uh, in the payouts and and all of this kind of, kind of gets aggregated into that individual view. So are you actually uh, moving towards some sort of on-chain credential? And if so, then it needs to become somehow more on-chain, right? Uh, or are you also looking at different uh, existing players who are trying to accomplish that and aggregating those? Uh, and if so, which are the players you think are interesting in this space? Hmm. Yeah, um, so we are not really moving towards building on-chain uh, credentials, like aggregating all these sources and, and doing it. I think we're hyper-focused on doing what we do best, which is finance and payments. Um, and we're going to focus on that. But we're happy to provide all the data that we have to anybody who's looking to form such, some sort of an aggregated tool. Um, I think there's many different sources, and Parcel is just one of them. So as I said, bounty boards, um, you know, how many grants uh, have they got? Um, some some from Gitcoin, some from different bounty boards, some from different DAOs who are not on parcel. And, and so it, it becomes an aggregated place for that. That will be like a more authentic solution than something uh, what parcel can build. Um, and uh, regarding uh, the next next question, I think, uh, um, can, can you repeat the question? I yeah, forgot. so if, if you're not doing it yourself, then uh, I presume are you actually looking to integrate with some of these players? And if so, what are some players you think are interesting in this space? Yeah, uh, there's a lot of new to- tools coming in uh, precisely for this. Uh, I think we'll see layers, like somebody aggregating some parts of it and somebody aggregating all the parts that there could be. Um, you know, we've seen, uh, so DIDs, right? So that's kind of the... I would say the protocol based protocol that everybody could agree on and say, this is the standard that we want to move forward with, with regards to credentialing and, and reputation. Um, and, you know, ceramic is, is kind of leading that, that way. Um, but we yet to see all everyone, you know, adopting that particular um, protocol itself. Uh, and we're seeing layers on top of it, right? So there's um, this gateway that that's, that's coming up, this catapult, 
um, that's coming up. There's there's a lot of these new DAO tooling who are trying to solve for on-chain credentialing, and it's it's excited. Uh, each of one each one of them has their different approaches. Um, somebody wants to build um, the gateway for onboarding into a DAO. Somebody wants to build a passport uh, that a, a self-sovereign uh, contributor can carry with themselves uh, with their just private keys. So we we are seeing different players, but it's just the beginning. So it's it's very early. All right, I think uh, that is a resounding message <laughs> that's recurring here, right? All this feels so experimental, be it from the the hierarchies or like uh, how, how do you recognize contribution and the individual versus collective. All these are still at a very early stage and, and a lot of uh, experiments being run. Uh, are there is there anything else I missed uh, in this conversation around the the frontiers of the experimentation for DAOs and what's working and what's not working? What have you seen so far that's interesting? Hmm. Yeah. Um, I think I'm I'm most uh, intrigued by uh, the allocation of compensation and who gets to decide that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's the basics of building a fair tooling around compensation, right? Like, who can decide uh, how much I've contributed, and it's kind of a recurring problem, right? So we've seen. Either there's a lead um, who is, you know, doing traditional corporation style. Hey, you've contributed X amount. Uh, hey, you've contributed X value. Um, and for this many hours, you've worked for this many hours and stuff like that. Um, or there's this decentralized peer-to-peer -peer system called coordinate, right? Um, and we've seen either of them. And there has been no experimentation run in between, you know, um, these um, spectrums. So. I think we're, we're missing a lot of experiments to run. As I said before, we're kind of building what's the easiest thing to build uh, and not experimenting at all with some of these stuff. Um, so something like, you know, building pods and structures in Orca, like that's kind of thinking from first principles and coming up with, uh, with what could be um, those the op optimal structure for DAOs, right? right? And and same with coordinate, like it's thinking from first principles and thinking about hey, can can peer based uh, compensation work? And and if seen, you know, over one thousand DAOs or maybe over fifteen hundred DAOs experiment with coordinate, which is which is great, right? We're actually looking forward to more experimentations uh, in this regard, right? You you have to think from first principles. Uh, in order to build products in in Web three, which are which are very native and which solve uh, a very native problem. Mm, mm. Great advice for for the DAO uh, infrastructure players. Thanks. Uh, I love to now then then zoom out. Right, we've we've talked a lot about DAOs and and from this ecosystem perspective. Now, uh, kind of like zooming out in the Web three space, the other narrative uh, or perspective is that. You're starting to see different clusters of ecosystems spring up, right? Of course, Ethereum is no longer the only player, uh, and we know many other chains are coming alive. Uh, Nosis Safe itself is integrated. I think last I saw, more than ten chains, uh, which are EVM compatible. So, uh, I wonder from from the DAO activity, which uh, you see from the payouts perspective, what uh, what patterns do you see then across? these ecosystems? And is there any difference in terms of the culture or, or issues that they are facing? Hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think it's a cultural problem because every DAO that, you know, is, is based on one chain sticks to that particular chain in terms of doing the payments. Um, and in terms of other pain points, I think, uh, having your DAO on, on Ethereum mainnet is kind of problem for smaller DAOs as the gas fees could rise at any point of time. And, and that could mean that, you know, they have to pay a lot of gas fees for just doing a limited number of payouts. Um, and that's a problem. Like that's a problem. And that's why I see we, that's why we are seeing a lot of adoption of, of other L2 chains. You're seeing a lot of DAOs on Polygon uh, who are starting up on Polygon directly uh, as opposed to Ethereum. Uh, mainnet, so we support Polygon as well, and and I think uh, there's good twenty percent, twenty five percent ratio that not right now we have of Polygon versus Ethereum mainnet. It started with uh, less than five percent 
uh, like six months before, right? So we're seeing more and more uh, Polygon DAOs coming up. Um, and so I, I think the problem is, is not exactly from the DAO side because you, you choose a chain, there's a Gnosis safe, there's tools like us, that's there. The problem exactly is with contributors because if you pay them $1,000 or $500 on Ethereum mainnet, and you pay them in in uh, your native token, which is volatile, and they're wanting to encash it, it's not it's not really optimal for them, right? They're gonna lose twenty five percent of their salary because of the exchange because of the exchange in terms of transaction fees, right? Uh, and that's not optimal. So their contributors, I think, uh, are looking for ways where they can, you know. So what they what they try to do is actually wait for. Uh, the amount to be big enough so that they can swap it using Uniswap or some other exchange, right? So uh, I think the problem is more on the contributor side, like how do I, um, you know, diversify my risk when I receive my contributions? Uh, how do I encash it? How do I off-ramp it? Is, does that particular chain support enough off-ramping math- methods for me to, um, you know, do it um, in a very cost-effective manner or not? Mm-hmm. So uh, along the DAOs, we also see a similar movement towards the cheaper, faster uh, chain, so to speak, because it's more inclusive for the contributors. Yeah, I mean, a lot of DAOs, I mean, majority of the DAOs have not yet taken that step, right? Uh, mm-hmm. We're seeing that slowly uh, and gradually happen. A lot of the bigger DAOs uh, have not moved from, uh, from the main Ethereum chain. Um, uh, but a lot of new DAOs are directly going to Polygon trying to resolve this issue. Mm. Uh, where, where else are they coming up? What about all the other EVM chains? Because there's there's a long list, right? Uh, are you seeing any interesting trends there? Yeah, so right now we uh, support Ethereum and Polygon. So we're, we're kind of, you know, growing that ecosystem. Uh, we have seen a lot of DAOs asking for other chains, right? Uh, it's it's Arbitrum, Optimism, whatever it is, there are a lot of projects you know, asking for Binance Chain as well uh, because they have support for off-ramping very, very easily. Like you can just send those funds in, in Binance and then off-ramp it very, very easily. Uh, and so um, there there has been a lot of uh, demand on the on the Binance Chain side as well. Um, I think it's it's distributed the demand is also distributed among other l2 chains and other alternative chains um and yeah we're, we're trying to support and ramp up our support as well in terms of supporting all these uh, multiple chains mm. so then very practically speaking which chains are you integrating next is it the feed that you mentioned so uh arbitrum optimism and then also bsc Yes. Um, so mostly Arbitrum and Optimism will go next in the next release that we have. Um, and then we'll, we'll, uh, what, what we do mostly is do our, our, our user survey that we do and uh, we'll decide according to that. All right. All right. Sounds good. Yeah. Well, we always have to uh, respond to, to where the demand is, right? If, if that's where people are using and going, well, uh, it is uh, what it is, and, and it is a signal that we cannot ignore. Right? I think that's uh, part of the lessons of Web3, right? Rather than fixating on some ideals of where it should be in terms of uh, decentralization, ownership, right? We see what, uh, what it, it's an interplay between an ideals and what really works. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I mean, agree with this. There's no point building uh, in a ghost town, right? Where, where nobody comes. You have to cater to the demand. Uh, and, uh, you know, as, as a DAO tooling project, you want to be where all the DAOs are. Uh, and right now it's these three, four chains only. We see a lot of distributed demand along the other, other, other chains. But uh, if as DAO tooling, we could only support these three, four chains, I think we cover more than 90%. Mm. Hmm. I see. Yeah, th- I mean, that's quite interesting already. Right? We know where the critical mass is in terms of one in ninety percent. Uh, so we've talked a lot about the DAOs and and like where they're distributed. Uh, but also, like you mentioned, uh, the tooling uh peep players are the ones that need to be very sensitive. I'm curious to hear from your view as well. Then, like, how do you see the stack uh of of DAO tooling uh, evolving? What are what are some interesting players that also make sense for you to pay attention to or like uh, integrate with? So of course, 
we know that the very basis is uh, knows is safe and virtually uh, all most if not all the DAOs have some form of multisig and, and therefore use most uh, knows is safe and then on top of that uh, parcel itself uses some of the web3 tools like gelato to automate some of the recurring payments right and i presume then you need then to look at other parts that eventually like we're talking about identity integrating into bounty platforms integrating into maybe even like voting and governance that will link to certain uh, logic for the payouts uh how how have you seen the the tooling landscape evolving uh and how does the stack look like today which ones are interesting to to work with sure yeah um yeah i think the last six months we really saw a lot of uh doubt ruling come out uh, around different different parts of the infrastructure um so as, as you mentioned like we're uh i think we're looking for some integration regarding um credentialing and on-chain profiles uh, how can we enrich that data um to to give it to our contributors um and then you know, there's uh, a lot of different uh, options that that you could have in terms of incentivizing uh, contributors uh, informing their compensation, right? So we are we yet to see experiments uh, being being done into that as well. Like, there's no good place for you to uh, choose different incentive mechanisms that you could provide to a contributor. So um, Uma is great with their KPI options, right? Uh, there's super fluid they say player for streaming which are all great tools um, if you want to do money streaming to your contributors directly instead of instead of paying them uh, every month um then there's uh you know different tools that come come along with uh bounty boards so there's a bunch of bounty boards that are there there's some uh tools for grants that that are coming up um so we want to build uh you know that integration layer as well so we're, we're kind of also uh working on that part because you know we are building the payment os uh for DAOs, and uh, we need to make sure that we have the execution layer ready for all of these bounty boards and all of these grants program and all of that stuff all of these project management tools i think there's plenty of really good tooling that that a DAO can use something like clarity wonderverse um, D work, all of the, those good tooling that you know come with you know uh, as 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 a complete replacement of your web two tooling, and then on top of that they work with existing tooling like Gnosis Save as well. So that's that's kind of the infrastructure that's forming around Gnosis Safe, and uh, we're essentially kind of complementing that service as well. Mm, mm. Yes, I think one one thing that's clear is that there are a lot of people who are attempting uh, to to solve many of these issues, and that's certainly an encouraging sign. And as you said, some of the early players, like including Parcel, have got enough traction to then validate the the pain points in in some of these areas, right? And and the players that you mentioned as well. Uh, one area that I personally see that's still wide open uh, for the whole DAO tooling space uh, is, of course, how can it be sustained, right? Where is the the value capture? so to speak. And it, so far, it seems that nobody has really figured that out. And it's a, it's the, something that nobody really wants to talk about because like, ah, it's fine. We'll solve the problem first and we'll figure that part later. Uh, and I think we are starting to see some early signs. So Gnosis Safe, for example, is thinking about uh, decentralizing, right? And uh, maybe spinning off it in its own way that's been discussed many times in the forums. Uh, that might lead the way for the, the entire ecosystem to start thinking about what it means who should own these tools should the ownership of the tools themselves uh, be decentralized or is there a way to recognize the value of these tools be it some sort of like public goods funding or some collective uh dao index uh curation thingy <laughs> right where, where different DAOs can say which ones are the most useful so uh have you guys thought about this thing uh, where is the direction that parcel is headed uh what are you paying attention to Hmm. Yeah, that's that's really interesting because uh, I would agree that most of the DAO infrastructure players are so early that they're they're not actively thinking about um, the value accrual. I mean, there is, uh, you know, value uh, accrued, but like, how do you capture that? It's it's gonna be extremely hard in the current state, right? It's because everybody everybody is building on top of uh, you know building this UX layer, 
on top of existing tooling or existing protocols. Uh, and that makes it very hard for you to capture that value. Um, so I, I think the direction that we want to take, and it's it's been the same since the beginning, is that uh, we want to build our on-chain uh, you know, protocol, and we're, we're kind of working towards that by the day. It's, it's still so early around what the optimal protocol would look like, but the end stages of a parcel is a community-owned project. Um, the the UI UX or the interface that we see right now is is definitely uh, going to be commoditized. I think that's that's probably uh, in alignment with the ethos of Web three as well. Uh, but that's a I think you you actually touched upon a good point uh, with with Nosisif and and uh, the ownership of all these tools. Like, does that have to be? Uh, can that be? Um, you know, uh, can that be sold? Like, can that be? you know, fractionalized and sold within the community as well. Like that's that's probably another interesting arena, but we'll see more and more uh, models to it. I think there's an article that also um, came out recently by A16Z, which was kind of very interesting. Um, and, you know, uh, we, we will definitely see more and more models of decentralizing, right? So we've seen right now that you own a protocol on chain and then you add an address of governance there, and then you you sort of build that whole governance layer on top of it. Um, that's just probably one way of doing it, and there's probably more that's going to spin out as uh, you know we see a lot of projects building on top of on top of these existing DAO infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like governance is or, or curation in a way is somehow uh, towards that direction because it, it, it is being used by so many different DAOs and there's sort of a collective recognition uh, through the usage of which ones are important. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll see how it, it goes from here. Is there anything else about Parcel uh, that, that uh, you'd like to share about like moving forward, right? And what, what more can we expect in this uh, coming? You talked about the own on-chain uh, protocol aspect. Uh, are there more details or what are the ideas that you have that you can somehow give us a sneak peek here? Yeah. Um, so uh, apart from all the, all the um, things that we're building for, for DAOs, right? Uh, you know, building incentive mechanisms or making it easier for you to integrate with other tooling. Uh, we're also very much interested in, in what happens after the payment is made to the contributor. Like what, how is contributor actually uh, you know, dealing with contributing to multiple DAOs and uh, does he have a single place of, of um, you know, information that he can gather from from working with um, with different DAOs? Um, and what happens after that, right? You you get paid in native tokens. How are you, how are you actually looking to um, encash some of these contributions? How are you looking to off-ramp it uh, into your bank account? Um, and so there are different... Um, problems that a contributor is facing right now as opposed to DAOs and, and we're very much uh, interested in that problem as well we'll and we'll continue to come up with with the product around that nice well looking forward to to seeing what uh, spins out next from from parcel uh, i think we are close to the hour now so is there anything else that you'd like to share? Perhaps like we can wrap it up with a quick, either a call to action, a shout out, or like a favorite example like like to share, or maybe even a question like for for us or the general audience. Yeah, um, I mean we could we could uh, wrap it up with uh, with the call to action. I think we're very much interested in listening to uh, what all the people in the community has to say. Um, you know, so we're available at, um, you know, Parcel HQ on Twitter. So we'll be looking forward to uh, whatever uh, that you guys um, have an opinion, opinion of. And we're very much uh, interested in, in the feedback that you could have for our platform. Um, our, our platform is, is like one mainnet polygon and a testnet uh, as well. So you can go to beta.parcel.money, test out the whole application for yourself on both the DAO and the contributor front. And then, uh, you know, we'll be happy to uh, incorporate all the feedback that you might have. Awesome. Thank you so much for your sharing, Anubhav. And we're looking forward to great things that are coming in the DAO space and from Parcel. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We'll see you next time.